go. So this is the Siemens or Moore 352 controller, the Moore Micro. It was purchased later on by Siemens, so I may refer to it as Siemens. The book for it is right here, single loop controller, and I'm going to step you through how to set some of the basic parameters. In the back of this handbook, you have a loop, they call it a loop diagram, but it's really a function block diagram showing factory configured option number one. This is the one that's programmed from, from the factory. These are all the software function blocks doing the different functions in the controller. Input, PID, auto manual, output, alarm, set point, all that stuff. You don't have to worry yourself with all the details of this. Just be aware these function blocks are here and each one of these blocks has parameters we can set. Now in the Mo Model 352 controller, each function block has a unique number. Function block 1 is always the analog in. Function block 3 is always the analog out. Function block 13 is always PID, etc. That's different from the newer Model 353 controllers where the function blocks have names. In the old 352s, they have numbers. The function blocks are numbered here all the way from function block 1, analog input, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in that order, so you can page through and find the one that you're interested in modifying. In our case, we are interested in modifying function block number 15 to set our process low and high range values. These are the lower range and upper range values, respectively. This will show the display how to scale the indication according to whatever calibration you have in your temp transmitter. To get there, we have to take a look at the parameters here, and we notice these begin with the letter S. The process low range and process high range both begin with the letter S. And that's key to understanding how to navigate yourself through the menu structure. If I hinge the door down, we see an enter configuration button. I push that once, notice the display down here changes. It now says V, I believe. If I go left and right with a knob, I see a series of letters. V, S, C, T, H, and F. I have to match the letter with the first letter of whatever parameter I wish to change. In this case, I'm going to show you how to change the process low and process high range. So the first letter is S. I will spin this until I see a letter S. Then I will step down into the menu structure by pushing the step down button. And now it asks me, OK, which function block do you want to start changing the S parameters of? And I want function block number 15. Notice as I spin this, I skip over a few blocks. It goes one. 12, 13, 14, 15. The reason it skips from 1 to 12 is that in this function block program that we have in it right now, we don't have any function blocks between 1 and 12 that have any S parameters for us to change. I've got function blocks 1, 3, 4, 5, 13, 14, 12, 17, but the uh, function blocks 4 and 5 apparently don't have any S parameters for me to change. I can skip over here to function blocks 4 and 5 and prove that. Function blocks 4 and 5 only have a couple of H parameters, what they call hard configuration. They don't have any S parameters, what we call soft configuration. So that's why those don't even show up as I spin through the options. So remember I wanted to get to function block 15, which is where my process high and low range points are. So I spin that to it says S15. And once again, I step down into the menu. SDP1, process point range 1. That's actually decimal point. If I step down again, you see the decimal point position, which I can change using the knob. That's how I set the number of decimal points uh, I have there. So and I shouldn't say number of decimal points. The number of digits past the decimal point. I'm happy with what I have, so I hit store. I will now step up into the menu structure and move one over to my next parameter, SPL1. SPL1 is process low range value 1. Stepping down into that, it shows 0. The factory defaults for low and high range are 0 and 100, respectively. I don't know where you're calibrated transmitter to right now. 50 and 150. 50 and 150. Perfect. OK, I'll dial this until it says 50. You'll find yourself cursing this knob. It oftentimes jumps right over the number you're trying to get to. Usually it doesn't go that smooth. Then I hit the store button, and it blinks at me telling me it stored that parameter. I'm now going to step up into the menu structure, move over to my next parameter, SPH1, step down, and set that to 150. And 
file store. So now I've set my low and high process range values to 50 and 150 respectively. I'm done with that. I can hit my exit button, get out of the configuration, and now when I go to process display, it bottoms out at 50. It's actually 46.67 because it's underranged. It will top out at 150. The bar graph still goes 0 to 100 percent, but my numerical values will range 50 to 150, and that will match your transmitter. So when the next person in the lab team changes the range on their transmitter, they'll have to come over here and change it accordingly in function block number 15 to match. Okay, uh, something else to watch out for in this controller, the D button. This gets people all the time. The D refers to display. I can toggle between different values. P means process, S means set point, V means valve. This is a full-fledged controller, and so I do have control over a valve that I may have connected to the output. Currently in this lab, you're not actually hooking a valve up to the controller, so it's irrelevant, but keep in mind, if you have this toggle to where it says V, you're not going to be watching your temperature. You're going to be watching your valve position. So make sure that's pointed at process, P for process. Any questions? Okay, stop the video.